Would you please stand? Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God knows no partiality, but in every nation, <clears throat> anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with, with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as, judged of, as judge of the living and the dead all the prophets testify about him that, anyone, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thank to God. God.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance that I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw that the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and he believed. 
for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. In the name of the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. I don't know about you, but I love a good story. Who doesn't? We live in a culture and society that loves to be entertained. 99.9% .9 of us either have cable today or a plethora of streaming services that include hundreds of channels and access to thousands of movies and television shows at the touch of a button. And beyond television and film, if you're a little old-fashioned like me, you also might have a load of books or at least a membership card to that most ancient secret society of knowledge and power known as the library. <laughs> I certainly love a good book, a good novel, fiction and nonfiction alike, as long as it has a good story to be told within it. And if you hang out in the church for very long, you will quickly find out that we Christians tend to be lovers of good stories as well, for the Bible is loaded with them. But every now and then, our deep love of storytelling reveals itself as going a little bit beyond just those stories of kings and queens, prophets, apostles, and princes in the Bible. A number of years ago at the parish I was serving at the time, I was approached by a few parishioners who wanted to know if they could gather in the church parish hall to acknowledge and celebrate the 50th anniversary of what they were all convinced was the greatest American television series of all time, Star Trek. <laughs> now, I have seen the movies that were based on the Star Trek series, both the original films back in the 1970s and 80s, and of course, the latest remake of the films that began in the early 2000s. But really, I'm still a bit too young to have watched any of the original television series that started airing back in the year of our Lord, 1966. <laughs> still, after much prayer and consideration, even though I knew 
This would be a party that really didn't have much in any way, shape, or form to do with our Christian faith. I said, sure, why not? I guess because in truth I am a lover of that other sci-fi galaxy far, far away. The one with Jedis and lightsabers and the Force. And because I believe that a good story can find ways to reach our faith and spirituality, I thought there would be no harm at all if we opened up the church parish hall to a Star Trek 50th anniversary bash. And when that day finally arrived, I even decided I ought to go check it out myself. I must admit, I didn't get my chance or get the note that said I needed to go pick up pointed Spock ears. But the good people still let me in. And wouldn't you know it, forget about the church and all of its good work and the community and our outreach. When I walk through the door, there standing with a camera in hand, thanks to the popularity of Trekkies everywhere, was a reporter from our local community newspaper. And yes, when the next episode, uh, the next issue, I'm sorry, came out, there I was right in the middle of page eight. <laughs> the local parish priest gathered in with his beloved friends, parishioners, and a whole lot of excited Star Trek enthusiasts. <laughs> Spock, I'm quite sure, must have been smiling down from the Starship Enterprise somewhere up in the Alpha Quadrant of the heavenly realm. But really, isn't it those great tales and stories like Star Trek or of Star Wars, of Herman Melville's Moby Dick, or of J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy, and so many others that not only entertain us, but also inspire and excite us. They can help us understand who we are, what we face as human beings. And they can help us land on what we really come to believe in this life through rich storytelling that mixes in with the myths and legends of thousands and thousands of years of human history. From the Greek and Romans of antiquity all the way up to the Avengers and Neil Gaiman's Sandman, one of my favorites, right here in the present time. The stories and myths of the past and the story creators and the new myth makers of right now. And brothers and sisters, this morning of all mornings, we too are arriving again at what many of us perceive to be a really great story. One we've all heard many, many, many times before. The story of Jesus Christ's resurrection from the dead. The Easter story. Over this past week here at St. Thomas and in Christian churches all around the world, the unfolding of the story that leads up to today has been recited again. Of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey with palms and cloaks carpeting the ground. Of his time in that upper room with his friends and his disciples washing their feet and sharing with them a new Passover meal of bread and wine. Of the long night of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane and the betrayal and arrest that followed leading up to Golgotha, the hill of the skull and the bloody execution on the hard wood and with the iron nails of the cross. And finally, to the laying of the beaten and ravaged body of Jesus in a quiet stone tomb in a peaceful garden. It has become for many in the world the story of stories. And yes, there are more than a few movies that have been made, a couple of TV series, a few plays and great musicals, and even a handful of graphic novels and children's cartoons. But really, if we are honest, I think there's a huge problem with the story of Christ's death and resurrection. It really doesn't fit the layout of a good novel as a good novel has been understood over the course of our human history. Seriously, there is no long ago in a galaxy far, far away. There's no opening line like, call me Ishmael. There's not even a simple, once upon a time. With the writings about the story of Jesus in the Gospels, there is no way to avoid the simple fact that it fails terribly at producing what we generally call a good myth, and especially from that period of time in which the Gospels were written. 
In the Gospels, the writers seem far more focused on laying out hard dates and times for the reader. Historical figures are named that can be traced through archaeology and ancient records. There are no allegories or proper metaphors or well laid out literary verse. It is simply a historical record of a man who lived and then had been executed by the terrible Roman method of crucifixion and how after three days he reappeared not as a ghost or as a superhero but simply as he had been before his torturous death alive and well and physically resurrected. There certainly could have been some more amazing action scenes had the writers of the gospel been great myth makers. Stories perhaps of revenge and reverse justice, a tale of the Roman Empire overturned and the great king the Jews had been looking for finally retaking Jerusalem and restoring the land of Israel to its rightful owners. That would have made certainly for a much better novel to read or a film to eventually watch. But that's just it. The story of Jesus' resurrection, the story of Easter, has and will never fit our worldly understandings of good myth. It is a story that reverses the entire world's view of what makes a good story in the first place or how a good myth should come and be told and end. And by its turning upside down the stories we've heard before and come to expect of violence that leads to more violence, of power coming only to the strong and the wealthy, of fleeting human love and of death's impending certainty, the Easter story of the resurrection of Jesus becomes something unique and different, something that I would say and the world would say is earth shattering and earth transforming. Jesus Christ and the story of his life, death and resurrection is in fact the completion of what myth and story in our human existence has only ever been able to express through that which we human beings know and can see and imagine. Jesus brings all the stories and wonders we struggle and fail at time and time again back around to what God sees, what God envisions, and what God will finish. Jesus reveals to us through his sacrifice of himself on the cross the deep love of God that overturns that which has always enslaved us and threatened us from the beginning, which is sin and death. His story becomes nothing less than the way, as it was first known, showing us how we cannot just imagine but truly live our lives more fully and completely in freedom, removing the requirements and demands of a sin-engulfed world. It is all this, brothers and sisters, that makes this Easter story truly the greatest story ever told because it is not just a story. It is the absolute truth. To put it another way, the story of the resurrection of Jesus, because it was not just a story, but because it was also history and reality, gives your life and my life a real promise of being able to experience and live out the very same story. For our life and discipleship and in faith in Jesus Christ has the real true hope of being utterly transformed into what God intended humanity to be, to change us, to alter our souls, and to renew our world again. The action of Christ's resurrection sets in the motion the restoration of the incredible, all-encompassing love which God our Creator intended when God first spoke His Word, when He breathed on the earth and set it into perfect motion, and when He made us in His own image, giving us a garden with everything and calling us and all of His creation good. And if you're sitting out there right now thinking to yourself, well, this is exactly what I expect a priest to say to me from the pulpit on Easter Sunday. 
Just another set of proclamations with no evidence like the story of the resurrection itself on Easter Sunday morning 2,000 years ago. If that's what's running through your head right now, that's okay. But will you come and talk with me after this service? Will you let me or Jeannie or Dave tell you our own stories? The stories about how our lives have been physically changed through the living Jesus Christ. And if you think that hearing it from clergy isn't good enough, because it's what you would expect to hear from us, will you let us introduce you to one of the hundreds of people who we know personally, many sitting right here in these pews right now. Our personal stories are nothing less than our own Easter stories. The stories of how in a moment of darkness, in a moment of pain, in a hospital room or in a funeral home or out in the streets on a rainy day or maybe on a sunny day, in our own quiet rooms, in a lonely place or in places surrounded by love and caring, we have been absolutely transformed, restored and resurrected by no one else except the living Jesus. These are the Easter stories that pick up when the gospel in the New Testament ends today. And they don't just fit this day. They stretch out through day after day, year after year, life ever life changed and saved by faith and discipleship and trust in Jesus. St. Paul writes in his incredible letter to the church in Rome, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen today. And because he first touched every bit of the pain you and I can ever touch, because he was willing to die that terrible death on the cross, because he was even willing to descend into hell to overthrow its dominion and power, because he was willing to do all of that, and then stand up and walk out of that tomb and finally defeat death. This day is the story of all stories. The greatest story ever told. Not just for Jesus or for the early church, but for you and for me now and always. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Friends, I invite you to stand with me. Turning to page 6 in your worship bulletin, or page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us profess our Christian faith on this Easter morning in the words of the Nicene Creed, saying together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found in your bulletin or on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Glenda, our bishop, and Brian, our assistant bishop. For Donovan, Jeannie, and Dave, our clergy, and for all the bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Joe, our president, Kay, our governor, and Tommy, our mayor, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for those celebrating birthdays today or the week ahead especially Bob, Cindy, Nancy, Paula, Liam, Warren, Jamie, Landon, and Peter, and for our companion diocese of Honduras, for Bishop Allen, for Bob, our missioner to Honduras, and for our colonial Episcopal students, Celine, Sarah, Wilson, Anthony, Cecia, Yaslin, Jaime, Angel, Scarlett, Anthony, Cindy, Kieran, Eric, Nora, Grodvin, Genesis, Andrea, Derek, Scarlett, Roberto, Daniel, and Kenzie. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. For Nina, Graham, Cindy, Tom, Sally, Doris, Eric, Randy, Barbara, Vern, Sharon, Jane, Larry, Diane, Anne, Pam, Janet, Thad, Julia, Jack, Larry, Linda, Matthew, Norma, Candace, Stan, Carly, Dan, Connie, Mickey, Quinn, Al, Tim, Jim, Ursula, Van, Annie, Lee, and Jane. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. you. Please exchange God's peace with those sitting around you.
Well, good morning and happy Easter again. So glad you've chosen to come out and worship with us here at St. Thomas on this wonderful Easter Sunday morning. Just want to take a few seconds to one more time thank all the wonderful people who put all their effort into beautifying the church for this Easter Sunday. It really is an all hands on deck. We have one of the most amazing flower guilds in all the Episcopal Church, I'm convinced. And they do an amazing job every year and at every special uh, holiday we have to decorate the church. We have incredible music to offer a wonderful brass quintet. Thank you for being with us today. If you did not make it in time for the brunch, there might be something left back through there. Take a walk back to the parish hall, see what's there. Uh, and uh, thank you to all the people who put together the food as well for us and everyone that puts their heart into offering up this the most important and sacred day in our whole church so uh, we're glad you're here if you're visiting with us and you want to get on our mailing list hopefully there's still some visitors cards there fill them out and let us put you on the mailing list so you can come and join us again to worship here at St. Thomas because it's like this every Sunday every single Sunday every single Sunday I'm telling the truth I'm telling the truth I would not lie as Paul says um, I want to let you know the one last big uh, hurrah before we finish our Easter celebration today will be an open invitation to anyone who would like to come up and join in the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. We have music ready to hand out to you if you want to come up. I think, Kathy, you want sopranos and altos. Sopranos and basses on this sopranos side. Sopranos and basses on that side. Altos and tenors. Altos and tenors on that side. If you have no idea which one of those you are, just go to either side. <laughs> just find the space, and they'll give you music and sing out with great joy and celebration. Um, yes, it's been a wonderful Sunday, and I hope you have a wonderful uh, evening uh, as you move to this Easter celebration. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
worship this Easter morning continues with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer D, which can be found in your worship bulletin on page 10 or on page 372 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to who serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under her heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of us all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with matriarchs, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Thomas and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
just give thanks for the gifts we've received this Easter morning using the post-communion prayer found on page 14 in your worship bulletin or on page 365 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now extend the invitation for any of you who would like to come forward and join in the Hallelujah Chorus with our choir. Music is available. Come forward and join the celebration. The rest of you may be seated.
You're all recruited. <laughs> Would you please stand? Well, Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you on this holy day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.